John Cohen of Science Magazine, welcome back as always. Thanks, Jackie. Today you spent some time looking at some fascinating but early science, strangely involving Minnesotans and Ugandans. Yeah, it, and it, it was really fascinating because it's a study presented yesterday that linked to another study that I found today. And they weren't done by the same people or anything, but they have overlap that I think is fascinating. The group yesterday looked at the lymph nodes of people in Uganda and people in Minnesota. The lymph node is where the CD4 cells live. A lot of them live. And the CD4 cells are the very cells that HIV targets and destroys. So they're the heart of the HIV problem. What they found is in Uganda and people who didn't have any HIV, their lymph nodes had junk in there, fibrogen. Clogging it up makes it difficult for the CD4 cells to talk to each other and to hear each other. In Minnesota, when they looked at HIV uninfected people, there was nothing like that. They looked clean. The architecture was normal. When they looked at HIV infected people in Minnesota who were on good drugs, they looked like the uninfected people in Uganda. They had the same sort of cluttered architecture. Do scientists know yet what to make of that? They have an interesting theory. And the theory is that in Eastern Africa, people are assaulted with all sorts of pathogens that aren't in North America. Malaria, there are helminthic infections. There are all these bugs that people are constantly having to confront. And their theory is that their immune systems are constantly inflamed. And that's what's leading to what looks like an HIV state in people who are treated, who have, as we well know, some inflammation still. Now tell us about the second one. So the second study is an enormous study in almost 30,000 people. It's led by uh, a group from the University of California in San Francisco, but it involves an international collaboration. And what it asks is when people go on to antiretroviral treatment, how much of their CD4 cells rebound? And they look all over the world. Everywhere it looks about the same, except for one place, Eastern Africa. So it raises a really provocative question. What's going to happen over time in Eastern Africa to people on treatment? Are they going to get the same benefit as people in the rest of the world? Or are they possibly not going to have the immune reconstitution that everyone else enjoys because of the environment they live in. So that ultimately, I'm, I'm mixing the two studies now, the people in Minnesota who are HIV positive on medications could ultimately be in better health than the people in Eastern Africa, also who are positive and on medication. That's, that's the that scary the proposition, yeah. Uh -huh. And we don't have enough data yet. Not, not enough time has passed. You know, people in Eastern Africa started on antiretrovirals in 2003, 2004. People in North America started on good drugs in 96. So we've, we've had enough time to say, hey, you can live for it. We can extrapolate 40, 50, 60 years with good medication. We don't know that yet with Eastern Africa. So what happens from here, from AIDS 2012 conference? Do these scientists continue pursuing it? Do they hope that other scientists here pick it up and run with it? What's next? Well, let's say this theory is true. Um, what you want to do is reduce inflammation. So maybe what you need to do is, in addition to treating HIV infection, is you need to treat inflammation. That will require new scientific studies and really creative approaches to dealing with a problem that isn't HIV specific. Okay. As I said at the top, fascinating. Thank, Thank you, you John Cohen.